Hello viewers, welcome to Ultimate Gaming Guide. Welcome to the world of cheap computer parts. So in this video, I'll be showing you how can you upgrade a Dell Inspiron 3650 computer and make it a gaming computer. So the Dell 3650 first release back in 2016. So it's almost about eight years old right now. And uh, it's an office computer, very low powered. So it would be a kind of a challenge to make it into a gaming computer. Let's see if we can do it in a budget. Okay, so first of all, when these computers comes in, they uh, like when you buy it from uh, you know a website like eBay, they kind of comes in a, like a bare bone format, like no no Windows, like uh, no no hard disk or something sometimes. So but. In my case, it, it did came with the SSD drive, uh, 256 GB. So all I had to do was just install Windows on it. Uh, another thing, this computer actually, uh, most of these computers actually uh, came activated with digital license. Uh, uh, so you don't actually have to buy another Windows 10 key or Windows 11 key. So you can save some money on this. All you have to do is just uh, you know install Windows on it, and it will automatically activate it because these machines uh, actually came with Windows 10, Windows 10 Home, and uh, it's already uh, and the key it, the key is attached to the hardware. So all you have to do is is download like Windows 10 ISO from Microsoft website, and then get on like a USB drive from 8 to 32. I'm saying 8 to 32 because if it's more than 32 GB, it will be hard to format it into an F32, uh, FAT32 format. So you want uh, anything from 8 GB to 32 GB. And then create an, a Windows 10 installation media on uh, using Rufus. There are like a lot of videos on YouTube about how how can you uh, create a in Windows 10 installation media. So check them out. And what do you have to do when you uh, are trying to install the Windows? You need to do two things. Like you need to disable your secure boot and select your USB installation media on the top of the boot device priority list. So you need to boot from your USB drive or the installation media. And, uh, and then after you've done the Windows installation, so before you do anything else, you have to make it up and running, right? So install the Windows. So after you have the Windows up and running, uh, you don't have to, uh, and if you if it did not come with an SSD drive, you can actually buy one for very cheap. Um, for as you can see, there's an example here. You can buy a 240 GB uh, SSD for only thirteen dollars. Just get one according to your needs. If you need a five twelve, get a five twelve. If you need a one terabyte, get a one terabyte. Okay. And then for CPU upgrade, these uh, computers actually came with uh, either a Core i Core i3 6200 and Core i5 6400. So you you can upgrade, but I did not upgrade it uh, to the CPU. But if you you can upgrade, and uh, you can uh, get about 10% performance increase. For for me, it was not worth the trouble. Uh, but if you do decide to get a CPU like a Core i5 6400, make sure you don't get the Core i5 6400T. You can see the T designation. They they're actually the price the same, but actually, but the 6400T is a lot slower than the 6400. You can see the 6400T is only 2.2 gigahertz, and the 6400 is 2.7 gigahertz. So and it's a quad core. Uh, so if you after the CPU upgrade, you need to do a memory upgrade. Um, and for, uh, these computers comes with like either 8 GB or like 4 GB. Uh, the, the version that I bought, it only came with 8 GB RAM. Uh, but the main problem with this machine is it only, uh, takes like a low voltage DDR3. So if you were, if you need to buy a RAM for this thing, make sure you get a DDR3 L. L stands for low voltage. Like, like there is an example here. I got this RAM for, from eBay for like about $9. Uh, Get two of the age because there's only two uh, memory slots. You only you you only be able to put 16 GB in there. Get like one 8 GB and one 8 GB, and you should be good to go. And uh, again, make sure this is a DDR3L. I tried to put another RAM 
another DDR3 RAM in there and it would not work. So without the low voltage DDR3 PC3L, it would not work. So make sure you get that uh, low voltage RAM. Uh, all right, so see, this is the example here. I got a, like a five RAM for $9. So that was heck of a deal. Um, and then main, now the main thing to make it a gaming computer, you need to get a GPU. Uh, for these uh, these computers actually came with uh, 80 plus certified power supply, but it was only 350 watt. But the CPU is very uh, low voltage. I mean, the CPU consume very little power, and the RAMs also consume very little power. So um, you can actually get away with uh, with the exist existing PS and power supply that the CPU uh, that the computer already have. So make sure you get the get a low powered graphics card uh, i was able to use these uh, rx 588 gb 2048 sp version or like a 1050 ti so if you do decide to get the rx 580 uh, gb version uh, it's available on aliexpress for only 50 dollars and it only takes a one uh, six pin pcie power connector uh, which should be enough and if you get a 1050 ti you don't need any kind of power connector so, but you know, um, this would be a little bit more powerful with the with 1050 Ti. It's about uh, it. It will get like a 2500 score uh, on uh, 3D marks, but with the um, 5A, 5, RX 580, you can get 3500 score. So it's a lot more performance, about one third more. And uh, to get the graphics card installed, you need some cables. So for me. Uh, uh, it, you need uh, because the the power supply the Dell computer came with Dell 3650 came with it does not have any kind of uh, you know six pin PCI connector so so you need to get this thing HDD SATA power cable for 3650 it's called GP2 uh, JM uh, so you need this on the left so you need this uh, you need to connect this one to your motherboard and then you have two SATA power connector available. So you need to connect this SATA connector with another adapter. It's called 15 pin SATA power to 6 pin PCIe. So you need to get this. Uh, these are, uh, you need to connect this SATA connector with one of these and then you have a PCIe 6 pin connector that you can uh, connect to your GPU. And these things are available on eBay for a very affordable price. Uh, this HDD SATA power cable, you may already have it on your computer, uh, but the 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 computer that I bought it did not came with one, so I had to buy one for six dollars. And uh, I believe these uh, uh, SATA to PCIe connector were like five dollars. So finally, you see, uh, I was able to fit the GPU and able to connect it so uh, when you see like uh, this um, motherboard to uh, SATA uh, HDD SATA power cable actually had two but I actually did not use two I actually used only one because uh, this uh, power cable will only have like a 75 watt limit so you don't I don't want to divert any power to any other components other than the GPU so I, I only used one and one for the GPU uh, and it seems to work fine and after the performance after the installation of GPU uh, I did run a performance test and I was able to get a 3205 3D MAR score uh, which is pretty decent uh, I was able to uh, push the resolution up to 4k 60 Hertz and it was able to complete the um, graphics performance test without any hiccup. So that was that was uh, pretty impressive for for a eight year old computer. And uh, I also did a Nova Bench score, and I got eight ninety nine. Um, and uh, you can you know in in here it, you can see the CPU score, GPU score, memory score, and the storage score individually. So that's very helpful. And then afterwards, I also ran the user benchmark test, but I only got a, like a twenty eight percent future benchmark score, which was a uh, pretty poor uh, because of the graphics. Uh, 
um, but then I try to like improve the performance a little bit. Uh, you can easily improve the performance uh, if you have an AMD GPU. Just uh, go to your the if you have the AMD Adrenaline Edition Control Center. Just go there, open that one up, and uh, click the performance tab, and then click Auto Tuning in the Auto Overclock GPU, and then you will get some performance boost. And another reason I was not getting decent performance is because I had two different types of. Uh, uh, memory module one from Kingston and one from Ramaxel. So, so what I did, I I switched to uh, the same kind of a RAM, and that then after after that, I ran the uh, ran the you know ran the performance test again, and you can see this time I was able to get nine thirty one. So I did improve my Nova Bench score by 32 points just by you know overclocking my computer so previously it was only it was only 899 so so that's a decent upgrade and um so that's just a performance test uh on different benchmarking software so what is the you might ask me what is the actual performance on games so i did not have a, like a lot of games uh, the only game i ran was the Resident Evil 4 Remake. This is a uh, 2023 uh, game, so it's a it's a new game, and I was able to get a solid 68 FPS in Resident Evil 4 Remake uh, by turning on the FSR. Uh, it's, um, this is a special option uh, which uh, uh, generate uh, frames uh, by reducing the quality a little bit. So I, I turned that to a performance mode and it was a very solid performance. Even though GPU was running kind of like 100% and then CPU was also kind of running like 99%, but I was able to play the game and, you know, it and the temperature did not like, oh, went way up high. It was, it was like around only 75 degree for the GPU. So, um, so it was not bad for a, like eight year old computer. And finally, uh, how much I actually spend on these things. So I bought the Dell 3650 tower for only $45 from eBay and the RX 580 GPU from AliExpress for $50. So uh, remember, uh, like when you're buying GPUs, uh, the more memory actually don't matter much. Uh, what matters is the clock speed. You know, like I, I actually got better performance from a 4 GB GPU. Uh, r9 290 so so something to uh you know take note of take note about and i got a, like a memory from uh, ebay for only nine dollars and then a sata cable that i had to buy for 6.5 dollars and sata to pcie cable to connect it to the graphics card for only 5.5 dollars so the in total i spent 116 dollar so so what do you think, guys? Would you be? Uh, are you gonna give it a try uh, to see if it's worth it or not? Let me know. All right, um, you guys have a good day. Thank you for watching.